Yeah. Um, Everything comprehension to fly, page 423, please. Until to here from you. Okay, I found it. Okay. Are you going to share your screen? Or Yay. should I? Can you guys see? Logan? Yes. Finding subjects in questions. Finding subjects in questions. How do you do it? Many subjects begin with a verb, a helping verb, or a question word, such as what, when, where, how, why, or how. I wrote how twice. Okay, cool. To find, okay. to find the subject of the question, you, uh, you can try rephrasing the question or changing the arrangement of the words. Here's an example. Where did you hide the bodies, Zohair? You can rephrase into Zohair, where are the bodies? And now you can clearly see that Zohair is the subject. Try solving these. Um, you guys can try. Mohammed Al-Khayyab, you try. What? Uh, try solving these. <laughs> but uh, re rearrange them and uh, get them. Uh, yeah, I, um, I did not. The first one that was your day. Like, what, what do I do? Find the subject, Muhammad. Jacob. Okay, and then? Oh, wait, why is it written wrong? How was you day? You were, you were. Just a oh. oh, yeah, that was a typo. <laughs> Jacob. How was your day? Okay. And um, then the second one. Uh, oh, wait, uh, I think it's your. You, your is a subject. It's just you. There is no typo. On no, the second. No, Number one, yes, your. Number two, the subject <laughs> is you. why are you so happy? Because I was able to. Okay, now the third one. It's all your or you. But, oh, yeah. And thanks for it. Yeah, thank you for your attention. I can't. So, simply to. <laughs> Okay, I'll just take the screen screen from you. So, simply in order to find the subject and question, all you need to do just to rearrange the sentence so that you'll be able and be able uh, to find the, who is performing the action verb or the person you are asking. Like, why are you so happy? So we can just rearrange it in order to say you are so happy. Why? And of course, the answer is because uh, the uh, Zuhair was able to hire the bodies. <laughs> okay. Oh wait, I'm I'm muted. Oh. Ah. So please open your books, page four hundred seventy-three, and thank you, Zuhair, very much for your presentation. Short but concise. Analyzing craft and structure. We have already studied the reading comprehension to fly and we have mentioned that uh, this reading comprehension speaks about the history of aviation and how man started uh, to just uh, one by one uh, master aviation after uh, he has already included uh, all uh, symbols of aviation like the American bald eagle and uh, uh, some other uh, <coughs> Features like uh, the winged horses Pegasus or uh, Cupid, uh, the God of Love, or even in the stories like Peter Pan and Tinkerbell, uh, all of these include uh, symbols of uh, aviation. That's why man has always, for more than millennia, started to seek uh, aviation and uh, to fly. Yeah? And even some of them uh, mastered uh, the ability to fly in order to demonstrate uh, power. So for the analyzing craft and structure in our reading comprehension, yes, Zuhair. I got a question. Um, for the pro for the projects, I don't understand realistic fiction. Realistic fiction. Hmm. All right. Realistic fiction means when you have a story that is not real but could happen in the real life. 
So what are the features of realistic fiction? How can we write about it? What are the main settings of realistic fiction? And give me some examples about realistic fiction. And who are the most well-known authors of realistic fiction? Okay, okay. so my realistic Just, fiction project will be Zuhair Gets Friends. That's it. That's great. Yeah, that's a uh, great realistic fiction. <laughs> and actually, you do have friends now. I know. Joking. Yeah, yeah. Oops. So, page 473, starting by analyzing craft and structure about the reading comprehension to fly. Muhammad Al Falah, good morning. Muhammad Al Falah is sleeping, I believe. Hassan? Yes, teacher. All right, can I start, please? Text structure, expository writing. The word exposition means explanation. An expository, you say, is a brief work of nonfiction that explains a topic. That explanation may involve the presentation of information, discussion of ideas, or clarification of a process. In this essay, Neil deGrasse Tyson present information and ideas related to human flight. He uses a variety of methods to make ideas and information clear to readers. So, certainly this is the one we have already said about uh, the reading comprehension to fly, uh, as uh, mentioned under the expository writing. Expository writing. So, what is the meaning of expository writing? Simply, the word that. Exposition means explanation. So you are explaining some idea or presenting some idea. And of course, this idea is a true one, or even if it was a fiction one, but you are presenting it via various of information and proofs. So the expository essay that has been written by Neil deGrasse Tyson presents information and ideas about human aviation and the history of aviation and the human history, how we started and where we have gone. And of course, while doing so, Neil deGrasse Tyson have used a variety of uh, information in order to present his idea and explain his essay. The first one is uh, the illusions. Illusions. Mr. Muhammad Khayat. Yes, teacher. Yeah, what do you mean by illusions? Uh, reference yeah. to people? You can read. Okay, uh, illusions are references in a text to well known people, places, characters, myths, and events, or works of culture or art. These references appear without explanation. They are designed to help readers to make connections and expand their thinking about the writer's ideas. What do you understand from that? It's a reference to things. Like? Oh, text to well-known people, places, myth, characters, myths, of oh, so Can you present any illusion from the reading comprehension? No. Um, I don't know. Come on, go back. Open your book and go back. You will find it. Tell me. I don't have a book. Not that I don't, not that I, not that I didn't open it, I just don't have it. You still out of real? No, I left the book out of real, and now I'm back in real. So now the book is in Mecca and I'm in real. Oh, that's a big problem. Yeah. Of course, for that reason, the other reference that uh, Tyson used in his own uh, essay. And even the first paragraph of his essay, he had it, uh, a quotation from Sir Arthur Eddington. So, and of course, using this uh, illusion, we'll just uh, try to explain as much reference uh, 
his ideas are connected to the topic and how to just present his ideas to us. So illusion, they are relations, and the thing is to win when people faces the character that the events or even war. What about the comparison and the contrast? Oh, David. Yes. Hello, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes, uh, do I read? Yes. From where? Comparison mm -hmm. and contrast. Okay, comparisons and contracts. Present similarities and difference, uh, difference among two or more items or ideas. By showing how one thing is like or unlike another, an explanatory winter uh, cl clarifies the quality of each item. So simply to speak about comparison and contrast, they are uh, they are the thing that uh, Tyson used in his uh, essay in order to just present uh, the information in uh, a comparison uh, form. Like for example. Comparing the first flight, uh, the first time that people try to fly by the Wright brothers, for example, for example they only uh, float for approximately 120 feet, and that to the wing of uh, a Boeing 747. So just making all of these comparisons presents his idea, and that uh, compares to the history of aviation. How, uh, where we? at the beginning and how are we right now for the descriptions save uh, yes very yes. description uses words and phrases that appeal to the sense and expository writing dix, uh, dix, expression can help readers understand a topic by showing what something looks like how it sounds or moves and even what it what it um, smells or tastes like all right so simply in order to use description so we are describing something like for example when Neil Tyson started to describe how we were able to reach the speed of from Mach 1 to Mach 20. So all of these words and phrases he used, he used them in order to appeal to the senses, to our own senses, so that we can become connected to the topic itself. And of course, while speaking in the expository writing, which is presenting information, then a description can help readers to understand the topic by number one showing what something looks like how it sounds or moves and even if it smells or tastes okay so because after all we're speaking about expository writing which is presenting ideas and information so if i ask you in the exam to write an expository essay so you need to tell me what the thing you have looks like, how it sounds and moves, and even what does it smell or even taste. By showing all of that, you are presenting to me the ideas of your own writing and making your writing concise and connected. The last point that Neil Decrease Tyson used in his expository he say was the cause and the effect. Khalid Al Khalifa. Yes, Hassan. I have a question. Yes. When can I present my social studies uh, project? 
Social Studies project. All the projects shall be presented by next week. Oh, okay. Starting from next week, Sunday, until Thursday, we will present our project. Teacher, something yeah. confuses me about the uh, thing, how the school ended. When, when we finish the school, we always do three tests of each subject and one exam, but we don't have time to do that. So how would it be? Every time we finish a quarter, there's always three tests and one exam, but we don't have time to do three tests. So I don't know how it would be. We will combine them. So it would be like two tests or? Yeah. Ah, okay. So we still have approximately four weeks until the examination starts. Right? Yeah, okay. So four weeks. So this week you will have a social studies, first one. Second week. Okay, so this week you will have a second quiz in language arts. The week after you will have a quiz number two in the uh, social studies. And the third week you will have the language arts. So you will do all of them. No, but teacher, there, there is a... Oh, okay, two tests each. There is no delay. And yeah, I thought, I thought there was three tests, like usual. Yeah, you will have the three tests and uh, the three, uh, not tests, quizzes. You will have three quizzes in language arts and two in social. You will have all of them. Okay. Because I have contacted Mr. Abdul regarding this problem as some... Uh, and some schools, of course, because of the new circumstances, they have uh, reduced the, the number of quizzes uh, to be one or two only. But he told me that uh, we have no, no change in our plan. If they change it, we will let you know. I have no problem. Okay, good. So, the last point about the story, they say that uh, Neil Tyson used the, or, uh, the methods uh, while writing his expose story, he say he used the uh, cause and effect. Of course, a relationship show how one situation can result from another and then lead to yet another. These connections help readers understand how or why the situation developed as it did. Simply, when I say, for example, I want to be a doctor because I want to help sick people. So you have a cause here, which is uh, the need to help sick people. Consequently, the effect will become uh, being a doctor. In our expository essay, we found out that Neil Tyson, he used this whole idea of presenting causes and effects in his essay so that we can find how everything started to form. Like uh, he started presenting that uh, quotation by uh, Sir Arthur uh, Duganton. He said that two people try to uh, fly, but unfortunately the wax from their wings uh, melted and they uh, fell. Later, he started to tell us about uh, the American Idol of uh, the bald eagle, and that how uh, all of the American people try to include aviation and flight uh, in all of their aspects of life in order to eliminate uh, power. And yet, uh, he started to tell us about uh, what we have reached right now, from space stations, rockets, missiles, reaching the speed of Mach 1 to Mach 20. And yet he came to tell us once again about the beginning of aviation, how two brothers started to make a very simple machine in order to fly with it, and how was the first person who, flowed, who, flown, who has flown solo on uh, the Pacific Ocean, it changes everything. Yeah. So all of these ideas are just a cause and effect. A cause uh, because we need uh, flight, we tend to have aviation in our all aspect of life, even if, uh, in our own imagination. And the effect of that uh, was uh, starting to develop and having the technology advances we have today uh, in our own aviation. Of course, we have some uh, concept of vocabulary like an apple, foresight, personate, myopic, 
Navigate and Seminal. Why these words? Of course, uh, these concept words help to show the contrast between innovation or innovative and uh, conventional ways of thinking. For example, in paragraph number five, the author criticizes uh, Lord Kelvin's uh, limited vision. Of course, Lord Kelvin, he was a physicist and he thought that uh, there is no object which is uh, heavier than air can fly. And of course, uh, that was very wrong because all of the birds we have uh, can fly and all of them are even uh, heavier than air. So he started to criticize uh, Lord Kelvin's limited uh, vision a flight as myopic. This word, of course, vividly reveals the author's views of Kelvin's mistake. So we have some questions to consider. How does the concept of vocabulary help the leader better understand the author's attitude toward this invention and the future? And what are words and the selection connect to innovative or even conventional thinking? We will consider these in the next session. And we need to know that uh, the concept of vocabulary words appear in uh, two slides. Yeah? We need to write a paragraph in which describe something yeah, that uh, enables someone to become a groundbreaking artist or even musician. We use at least three of the concept of vocabulary words in our paragraph uh, from these vocabulary. That's, of course, your assignment. And we shall deal with uh, the perfects for uh, in our uh, session next Thursday. So, any questions so far? No teacher. All right. Jumping to the conventions. What is the meaning of conventions? Let's speak first by capitalization. Sing, can you read, please? Capitalizations. Capital letters uh, signal the beginning of a sentence or a quotation and identify proper nouns and proper adjectives. Proper nouns include the names of people, geographic ge geographical locations, specific events and time periods, organizations, languages, documents, and religions. Proper adjectives are de 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 derived from proper nouns, as in French from France and Canadian from Canada. All right, so I believe we have already started the, both uh, the proper nouns and also the proper adjective. Proper nouns, they are the nouns of uh, person, places, geographical features. Like, for example, when I write Hussein, so I cannot write Hussein with a lowercase h, I have to write it with the uppercase h or a capital. So I cannot write the same like this. That's a mistake because same is a proper noun. Consequently, we have to capitalize the H. And also, we have some proper adjective, like for example, Italian pizza or French bread or Canadian uh, pot, for example. So, using these proper adjectives, also, they must be capitalized. Here we have some examples. The first letter of the first word in a sentence must be capitalized, like here, T and the beginning of the sentence. The blue J is very aggressive word. Wait. Can can you give me pack my pen? Another one when we have Einstein said of course Albert Einstein he is a proper noun so he must be capitalized. Einstein said that's a quotation. You have here a quotation marks this one and this one called the quotation marks. Quotation marks tends to tell us about what someone is exactly saying. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. So at the beginning of each quotation, we must we must capitalize our letter. 
We have also the pronoun I. The pronoun I is always capitalized. So you have the E here at the beginning of the sentence and the pronoun I. Anywhere in the sentence, we must capitalize the pronoun I. Proper nouns, including, of course, people's names, people's titles, when used as part of their names, places, names, and also names of organization. So we have here Elsa, that's the name of a girl, a proper name, or a proper noun. Consequently, it must be capitalized and also it came at the beginning of the sentence. Elsa when sailing down the Hudson River. Hudson River. That's a proper noun also of a river. So the H and the R must be capitalized with Ms. Lou. Of course, Ms. we say it when we don't know whether the female in front of us is married or unmarried. So we have Miss, Ms., Mrs., and we have Mr. Okay, so we have Miss, Ms., Mrs., and of course, Mr. for any male one. So we tend to use Miss when the female in front of us is unmarried, Miss when we don't know whether she's married or not, Mrs. when she is married, and Mr. for either of them. Married or unmarried, we say Mr. So Elsa went sailing down the Hudson River with Miss Lou and her girl Scott too. And later we have also the proper adjectives that so they must be capitalized, like many people of Brazilian background. Brazilian background speak the Portuguese language. So we have Brazilian and Portuguese. Both of them are for the are uh, proper adjectives and of course uh, the m in many at the beginning of the sentence any questions so far guys no there is video here when i look up Of course, Neil Tyson is the director of the science. There I was, being a regular kid until I was nine. And one weekend, we went to the Hayden Planetarium, right here in New York City. And right, it's just another museum until they turn out the lights and stars come out. Back then, space shows were live, and so there's this voice. We are now in the universe. Here are the stars. You're looking up, you don't see anybody, you just hear this voice. So it's like the universe is talking to me. And there was a sky unlike that which I've ever seen, having been born and raised in New York. And there you are, immersed, bathed in the cosmos. And that can be quite influential on a nine-year-old, as it was on me. It's as though you were locked in a room your whole life and then somebody opens a window to a universe, to the universe. Two years later, my parents bought me my first telescope. And I saw the sky as sort of the universe had intended it to be seen, bringing the moon to me as never before. That was it. I was hooked. From then on, I wanted to be an astrophysicist. What's fun about telescopes is that if you've never looked through one, and then you look through one for the first time at the moon or at Saturn, it is astonishing. Saturn has rings. Oh my gosh, the moon has craters. Things you've heard about and read about, but to experience them yourself becomes a singular moment in your life. You are there in the universe. You can't get enough. And then, to this day, when I look up at the night sky from spectacular vistas, mountaintops, middle of the ocean, I look up. And when I see the night sky, I say, 
that reminds me of the Hayden Planetary. In fact, looking back on it, I would say that weekend, the universe called me. All right, grade eight. Do you have any question? No teacher. Okay, if you don't have any question, that's going to be it for today. And see you next session. Thank you. Yes, you too.